I don't care what you... Bushel, I don't care what you write about me in the, in the sun. I don't care, Bushel, what you write, but just make sure next time you get a photograph in, all right? You bearded bully. Go, roll titles. <laughs> Hello, welcome. Here we are live across the country in glorious stereo. Welcome to the James Whale Show until two in the morning. Tonight, in uh, the next part of the programme, we're talking about drugs, whether or not you think drugs should be legalised and any views you have on drug-taking addiction. And we'll be getting into that after the first part of the programme. But we thought what we would do for the first part is, we, we, you know, we take some phone calls. Andy's on the line. Andy, hello. Hello, James. Where are you calling uh, from? London. London. Right. I now, thought that bit at the start of the show was a bit naff, really. I mean, the phone yeah. call wasn't really up to much. But it, well, what I want to no, say no, no, here, James, no, no, no. Is... Bushel has been giving me a lot of hassle. Well, I... who is Bushel? Well, I mean, precisely, all precisely, all in, precisely, precisely. I don't think we need to say any more on that, well, okay, really. Okay, fair do. Yeah. But what I was going to say to you was, what's wrong with a bit of spliff, James? I mean, really. No, what? I don't know, really. I don't know. Do you know? Well, so... no, I didn't think you'd know either. So, uh, really, you've answered your own question. Uh, Scott from Norfolk. Hello, Scott. Uh, James. Yep. Do you think the legalisation of C-class drugs would lead to a decline in the use of dangerous hard drugs? What do you think? Oh, well, that's, that's what I'm asking you. Well, stay tuned to the programme and uh, you'll find out what uh, I think a little bit later on. Thank James. you. Uh, Tony from Middlesex. Hello. No, Jay, I think it is. Jay from Middlesex. Hello, Jay. Hello. Hi. Hello. Um, I totally agree, uh, disagree with, with, uh, with cannabis, at least, anyway. Well, let's not get bogged down a little later on on just cannabis. Let's talk about all drugs and uh, whether or not it would actually help people to come off them if they were not legally accessible as if to go into a shop and buy them over the counter, but on prescription. But you, you, you'll see a little bit later on. We have a, a lot of interesting people on the programme to talk about it. I mean, I think that... Uh, I don't know what you think, but I think that treating drug taking and drug abuse um, by locking people up in prison and uh, doing that sort of thing it doesn't seem to work, does it? No, it doesn't. It doesn't seem to work at all, so there needs to be some different kind of approach. I Have don't you... know whether that's legalising it, though. Well, I don't know whether legalising it is the right word. I think perhaps uh, decriminalising it. That's the, the term that they use, isn't it? Decriminalising it. Anyway, Joy, thank you for your call. Paul from uh, Lincoln. Hello, Paul. Paul? Right, um, well, I supply cannabis, uh, amphetamines and, you know, LSD. You mean you're a pusher? Uh, certainly am. You mean um, you, you're quite sort of happy to come on the programme and uh, promote the fact that you're a pusher, right? Well, I am, because I sell it to the LTU so they can go mad in Grimsby tomorrow. Oh, very, very strange. I mean, do you think that that, that sort of call is going to really benefit anybody? And do you think you're being clever making it? Well, what, what's the point? Hey? Oh, you've hung up. I wasn't going to cut you off. I was going to sort of belittle you a little more, but never mind. Okay, that's how you feel. Victor Lewis Smith has got a... <laughs> I like this. We've got lots of faxes coming in. Thank you for those. Some of them unreadable. Victor Lewis Smith has uh, said, can you give me a, a mention? I start my new programme on Radio 1, and head of Radio 1's had to leave the country because of it. Oh, that must be terrible. He does it from his luxury penthouse flat in York. We'll have to look out for that. Um, now, what about, uh, what about the problems of... What, sorry, what was a lot of... What? You all right? Are you okay? Right, yeah, everybody else all right? Yeah. You're sure? Yeah, yeah. Good, okay, fine. Just uh, as long as you are. I get a bit fed up tonight watching, just changing the tack for a moment, watching uh, the Eurovision song, whatever it is again. I mean, those songs are atrocious, and they must be able to find a few other people, Wogan, to present it. I mean, who was that girl? Emma, wasn't it? I made a note of her name. Emma something or other. It was the most unmemorable song I have ever seen. It was absolutely terrible. It was awful. Now, Mark is in London. Hello, Mark. Hello. Yes, Mark. Yeah, can I just say two things? Did you enjoy that Eurovision song stuff? I didn't watch it. I don't watch crap. You don't? Just two things. Oh, no. that's one good thing. One he is... doesn't watch crap when he yeah. watches Yeah, listen, two oh. things. One is, yeah, yeah um, I've oh. got photos of you. Good, well. good. We'll sell them to the newspapers. If you make money out of it, that's fine. Um, Mike from Shropshire. Hello, Mike. Yo, James. Yes, Mike. How you doing? I'm doing very well. Thank you, Mike. I'd just like to say that um, drugs should not only be legalised, but they're actually very beneficial to the Don't world. Don't be stupid. What a pillow. One of the things that we won't be doing tonight, all right, is promoting the fact that drugs are in any way good for you or advantageous. The fact is that drugs, and I mean, we have two sort of fairly uh, 
bad drugs, alcohol and, and tobacco that people take readily at the moment. They don't seem to do them any sort of good at all. Drugs are not good for you. Drugs don't help you at all in any way, shape or form. But I'm sure we will get on the phone certain people who want to sort of sound big or clever and in those immortal words it's not big and it's not clever and it uh, can be very damaging. So I think they've done enough of that really. We had some letters. I've got a couple of letters here. I wanted to read you just before we go into the video. Uh, Mrs Evans in South Glamorgan finds it totally unacceptable that people are allowed to use foul swear words on the James Whale show. Even if it is late at night, there's no need to encourage the decline of morality and the English language. I didn't know we were doing that. Anyway, this is Hart's new video and it's called I Just Want to Make Love. Six ten double O. He's waiting for your call now. I'm sorry about that. Right, um, I thought I was actually going to have more time for that first. We had a lot more phone calls to take. We will take more calls. You know the number, 053246-1000. You're going to hit something. Uh, we'll carry on with the, the rest of the show now. And um, let me introduce you to uh, my guests on the program first of all. Uh, we have Chris Butler, MP, who uh, is with us. We have Richard Stevenson, who's in the centre there. And we have, uh, it's a real name, folks, yes, Dr Douglas Diggle who is on the end. And we're going to debate now whether or not drugs should be legalised. I did ask somebody to come from the, uh, the Home Office. Uh, they were very busy tonight, actually. But they did send me a statement, and you. So that's uh, no, very nice. No, they didn't send me. Didn't they send you? They, but you, you agreed own. to come. That's yeah. right. I was going to put the, sa the statement here on the chair, but I've, uh, I've decided against that. Um, in fact, I think we should, we should start off, Chris. I've got the, the government's feeling on this, um, and they, it's sort of non-committal really, it says there's no such thing as harmless experiments with drugs, no such things as recreational drug taking, and certainly no case for legalising prohibited drugs. Drug misuse sooner or later leads to addiction, poverty, crime, illness, and possibly death, which I think most people would agree with. Uh, and they go on to say that they need support from family and friends, from their schools, and where they work, and we are starting a major new initiative to help that happen, and we also want to hear about methods used by other countries um, and any other suggestions anybody has, which seems that they've got a very open mind about it. What about yourself? Well, uh, I've gone into the question in some detail. I'm Secretary of the All-Party Drugs Misuse Committee, so I didn't know much about it before I got into it, and it is a fascinating subject. It gets more interesting the more you look at it. But in the United States, they've got a massive problem there, something mm. like 12 million cocaine users. But they're beginning to realise that the police can't really solve the problem, aren't they? Well, they couldn't put 12 million people in jail. Precisely. They? And the, the policy of complete prohibition isn't reducing drug use in the United States. Last year, we had uh, worldwide record crops of cocaine mm. and opium. So the idea of spraying the foliage of this and, and, and uh, getting rid of the, the, these sort of crops like that, you, d you don't go along with that? Well, it seems to spend an awful lot of money just diverting the crop to elsewhere. They tried that in Mexico. They mm -hmm. destroyed the marijuana crop in Mexico. And now it's all grown in the United States. So would you like to see it decriminalized? No, I don't you think wouldn't. that's the answer either. I think that gives the wrong message to people. Because I, I'm, I'm looking not only for uh, pushing people into the official services uh -huh. by keeping it illegal generally. But do you think there's any point in sort of locking up some people who we may have in the audience here who've been smoking dope or, or taking heroin or something like that? Do you think there's any, any point in locking them up or not? Well, in uh, large parts of the country, in Merseyside, yeah. for instance, if they were just small cannabis users, yeah. they'd probably only get a warning as, as the law stands mm. at the moment. But we couldn't put all our drug misusers in prison yeah. in this country. OK, let me go on to Richard Stevenson, who's sitting next to you. Now, Richard, you're an economist, right? So you're looking at this in a slightly different context, aren't you? The, uh, the, the, the fact that you've actually said you think, forget all the niceties about drugs, actually decriminalizing them, you think they should be made just totally legal? Yes, I do, as a matter of fact. Um, like everybody else here, I want mm. to um, do something about drug problems. Present policies simply don't seem to be working. I don't think there's the slightest chance that they will work in the foreseeable future at their levels of... Yeah expenditure which governments are prepared to give us and therefore I mean I think we should legalize them 
If I, if, if it was legalised, I could go into any shop. You're, you're suggesting you get it in a shop. What sort of shop? Yes, we could talk about different things, but I'd suggest that it be about as illegal as, say, alcohol. Yeah. Licensed premises. But then wouldn't that encourage orders? people who hadn't tried drugs to go in? And I think detect it would. Them? I mean, that's a danger. As a matter of fact, yeah. I do not believe, actually, that whether the stuff is legal or illegal or dear or cheap actually has a lot of influence on a person's decision to become a drug user. What do you think makes somebody want to take drugs? Yeah, I think if we knew that, we'd be well towards solving yeah. the problem. I don't think we know. I think they probably like the sensation. You think of the fact that it's illegal is, is one of the draws to Well, it? it may be. Yeah. That may be, but they actually like the sensation yeah. of the drug. I don't think there's much fun going into that. OK, now, Douglas Diddle is a doctor. Dougie, you've actually uh, presumably had people come to you with drug problems and, and, and related problems. You don't think it should be legalised or decriminalised either? Well, certainly I don't think... I think the idea of, of making it sort of freely accessible is going to take into the category of, of getting us into what you mentioned earlier in the programme mm. uh, of alcohol and cigarettes. We've got 100,000 deaths a year through alcohol abuse and 1,000, 1,500 deaths on the road due to, to alcohol problems. So yeah. if you're going to do that, you're going to multiply the problem in that sector as well, and I think it's a bad policy. OK, now most of the audience have, have uh, presumably you've got some involvement in drugs one way or the other, haven't you? And that there's a guy on the end here. Can we can we actually get over here and talk to, to my friend here? Perhaps if you come over, sure. come over here uh, and stand in the light. Now you're a you're a registered yeah, drug addict. I'm a registered heroin right? addict. Right. Turn around this way. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Registered How long have you been on heroin? Fourteen. Years. <coughs> Fourteen years. Yeah. Would you? I mean, would you like to get off it if you could? Um. Or do you it, enjoy? Um. I enjoy it. I take it. I, I take it because I enjoy it. But um, if 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 I if if I could carry on now the way I am now, which is I I've got it in a decriminalised way. I get it prescribed through uh, seeing a doctor at, mm. at a at a, at a clinic. I mean, I'd like yeah. to see most c uh, category A drugs decriminalised to the extent where you would have to go to a, to a clinic and, th and, and have them prescribed daily mm. by a doctor. But if you could have your life over again, would you rather not have got involved in no, it? No, no, I don't regret it for a minute. You don't regret it? No. Yeah? But you wouldn't want to encourage other people to go on it? Um, I don't want you to encourage other people no, I, to go I on mean, it at I, all. I, I mean, I, 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 you know... I, 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 haven't, I haven't got a moralistic stance yeah. on that. OK, go back and join the audience for a few moments. Let me, um, let me now introduce to you uh, a piece of film. We went along to Merseyside, who have a, a completely different outlook on the drug problem at the moment, and see what you think of this. Whaley goes to town. Most drug addiction clinics provide addicts at best with a maintenance diet of methadone syrup, which is a heroin derivative, or try and get them a place in a detoxification unit. In a bid to get people off injecting, some clinics exchange addicts' methadone ampules for cigarettes laced with the same substance. But this clinic in Widnes is different because it's prepared to give addicts prescriptions for pure heroin as well as methadone. No, no, hang on. I was going to say, to, to, Jim has been on, on heroin and methadone for 20 years. Uh -huh, yes. I mean, you look fitter than me. Do I? Yeah. But presumably you'd rather not be on it. Uh, yeah, well, I wouldn't rather not be yeah. on it. Um, Unfortunately, it's been 20 years now. Yeah. Uh, I'm just on a controlled dose, long term, uh, and that keeps me more or less normal. When did you first get it? Um, when did I get it? Yeah. About six years ago. Where? In Bournemouth. Yeah? In Bournemouth? You come from Merseyside, you went, there's a yeah. long way to go to get yeah. it, isn't it? Yeah. I wasn't there on drugs then when I went there, you know, it was yeah. just the people I was with and like they, they was using all the time in my house all the time, which I didn't object to. But I thought I wouldn't do it myself, and when I did, you know, I just wanted to see what it was like, really. Let, let's talk over here to Danny. I, I mean, Danny, how long have you, uh, you been on? About seven years, yeah. properly. And what is it? Has it completely cocked your life up? It did, not, not now, because I'm on, like, a controlled dose. Yeah. Like, every morning I go to the chemist, get my head in, on methadone. You've been on 18 years. That's right, yeah. Is there, is there any chance that you're going to beat it or not? Jesus. Well, as I'm getting older, I'm finding the drugs are getting more bored. You are? Yeah. Good. Yeah. I feel the same about sex. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it is, 
It's just <coughs> I thought that would bring you in, Bridget, yes? Yeah. <laughs> Mention sex and she's there. It's yeah, a good on. comparison, though. Is I it? I mean, you know, you're asking how easy it is to give up. It's yeah. like saying to somebody, will you give up sex? You've tried it once. You're not going to do it again. You know, it's the same context. So that you know, it, it's, it is. It's something that you've done and you've sampled and you like it. Now, you're on methadone at the moment, controlled yeah. methadone. And you come here every week and you have a chat. But you also, each day, go to the chemist and get your drug? No, I get mine weekly. You get yours weekly? Is there a danger when, when you can get it this easily from the chemist that you'll be tempted to go out on the street and sell it? No. No, I, I wouldn't do that because... <laughs> It's too important to me. It's, it's like, it, that's like my gold dust. Now, before you came here, Bridget, and this programme was available to you, how did you get the money to get the drug? By committing crimes. What sort of crimes? Fraud, mainly. Fraud? Yeah. Checkbooks, things like that. How much money did you need to feed your habit? £800, pound, £900 pounds a week. Maybe more. £800 pounds a yeah, week? Yeah, on an average. Easy. I mean, it'd be hundred pounds a day, but that would just be that would just be to start me off. Easy. I mean, that would, I would do that in of a morning time before twelve o'clock came. I'd have to get that money it's before not twelve money, o'clock. Though, is it? it's in goods. Let me talk. To, <laughs> yeah, let me talk to, to Jim. What did you used to do? You can get I, harassed as well. I, I, well, I, I was involved in robberies. That's how I used to get my money. Yeah. Robberies uh, and robberies. Things like that. You ever been inside? Oh yeah. 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 Bridget, what about you? How, how do you feel about the fact that sitting here on television talking quite sensibly and normally about drugs, it may promote some people perhaps to try yeah. them? I, well, no, I don't think it should. I mean, I, that isn't my aim. That isn't the reason why I come here, to promote drugs. You know, I, I would hate myself if I thought it had. It's like, really, it's to get across people's views who know what they're talking about, and I really do feel that I know what I'm talking about. So you've got to explain to me, because I can't understand why. I understand the uh, analogy you made earlier between sex, having to give up sex. All right? I understand that. But I don't understand this thing of, you know, you're doing something that you know is not doing you any good particularly, and you just can't bring yourself to say, well, right. It's frightening. It frightens me. What are you me. frightened of? I don't know. It just, it frightens me the thought of not having anything. Every one of us here, every one of us here taking drugs have got some reason. underlying reason for it, yeah. some basic personality defect or something like that. Something you take away the drugs and that problem's still there. How aware are you all, and I'll let, let me go from, from Danny backwards, how, how aware are you that you may inadvertently be encouraging youngsters to get into drugs? I don't let people know at all, and I never encourage anybody no. at all. If anything, I'd uh, put them off. The idea of taking drugs. It's just a private thing. Let me know, what about you, Stephen? No one in my family, children wise, have any idea that I take drugs. I keep it a well away from them. Does your wife take them? She smokes cannabis. What about your kids? If they got addicted to it, how would you feel? Shite. I don't advertise the fact that I, that I take drugs. Now you've got grown up children. I've got grown up children, yes. Uh, 19 and 17. Do they they know. know. They know, but they've never seen me, personally. Yeah. In all the years, they've never seen me. Do you think they take any kind of drugs? No, no, they don't. No, they don't. My wife doesn't have uh, uh, cameras. Have you actually sort of said to your kids, look, I have a problem, yeah. it's a medical problem, don't get anywhere near I, this? That's uh, absolutely what I have done. Uh, yeah. I've rammed it into them again and again and again because I would really feel a failure if any of my kids were taking drugs. How about your daughter? Do you think that your heroin and now methadone addiction has, has had any effect on her before she was born? I mean, no. Oh, no, I wasn't, you know, I didn't take drugs and all the time I was c carrying hair. But she's only four as it is, and I, I'm, I've started to tend to go on. She never sees me taking anything. The next thing I want to find out is now that you can get yours legally, and maybe after this show perhaps there'll be a little pressure brought on people to actually spread this sort of thing. Okay. What about the people that you... I mean, they must be furious, because you said before, Jim, it's a multi-billion pound it exercise. Well, right? it, it is. is. It is. So what well, they it must is. be really it's pissed off. It's obvious, isn't well, it, really? You mean the pushes? Yeah. Oh, I do. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's been suggested that um, the doctor here, Dr. Marx, could well have his gas yeah. smashed in. I mean, that's been suggested. Yeah. You know, but it, because he's taking business away. What do you think about from, it? I think he's an absolute... He's a gem, Gem, isn't he? He's, yeah. a, he's a diamond.
4610 He's waiting for your call now. So, should addiction be seen as a social problem or a criminal problem? Join us after the break. Okay, welcome back. Now, just before we get into talking to uh, my guests and some more of the audience who are looking stunned here in my greatness, probably Richard, who's on the end here. Now, Richard has um, <laughs> shut up. Richard has actually uh, come off drugs, but you you started drugs at an early age, didn't you? How old were you? Sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah. Now you you were giving the poor old doctor here a, a bit of a hard time in in the break after that film. Why was that? Um, because he was saying that um, drugs are a disease. And I was saying, well, like, if it's a disease, if people use it, but to people that don't use it, then it isn't a disease. Yeah. And the fact yeah. is, is that he can say that people can be redu reducted off methadone, and I, and I believe in that. But at the same time, I was saying, well, what about women that you've probably prescribed things like Valium to for the last yeah. 20 years, and are you bringing them off, or are you still making them a habit? Uh, have a habit, you know? Yeah. Do you, I mean, did you think what was happening on, on Merseyside there was good? <coughs> well, you're always going to find, it's, it's like, like, like the, the smoking or the yeah. Valium, idea. There are going to be a small, well, not smoking, sorry, the volume. Let's talk about the volume idea. Mm. There are a number of people who are now addicted to it. They reckon about a quarter of a million people in this country are addicted to volume. A large percentage of those you can actually get off it, but there are a small number who cannot be gotten off it, and that's very tragic. So should you and be prescribing them a limited amount to keep them um, It's the only way to do stable. it. Stable. Yes, that's yep. the, only, the only thing yep. you can do. So people here, for instance, maybe they are a, uh, one of the small percentage who do actually mm. genuinely need a long-term uh, maintenance dose, but one really ought not to be looking at that as the norm. Uh, you should be looking at clinics like this as a means of getting rid of mm. it eventually, whatever the time course is, yeah. and not encouraging yeah. people to suppose that they can glibly go and get it and then yeah. have a lifetime support. Now, Richard, let me let me go back to you. You don't think it should be legally available, do you? No. You you've seen the problem. I mean, your your own story is one that you've had nothing but problems. You've been in prison a number of times, haven't you? Yeah. How many times have you been in prison? Five altogether. Five times altogether. And you're how old now? 22. 22. 23. 23. Yeah. Well, we must make the point that Richard is off it, and Richard is a, a darn good advertisement for getting off it, right? Yeah. Because there's some people I detect in the audience here tonight who are quite proud of the fact that they smoke dope, and, and, and you know, it's cool, and uh, hey man, look, there's nothing wrong with us. You should see yourselves from where I'm standing. But you would say, you would say that that, that leads on to other things. Um, I would say that I don't see the point in... Uh... In, you're talking about decriminalising drugs, well, yep. drugs that are prescribed by a doctor, as far as it, like getting reducted off heroin or whatever, uh, decriminalised anyway, but uh -huh. it's legal. And I think to legalise drugs, I mean, it, it depends in what context you're talking okay. about. Let me, let me just go for a moment to Chris Butler, who is the MP here, and who uh, hopefully at some stage or another will, will have some, uh, uh, something to do with perhaps helping to, to, to stamp out the problems of drug abuse. Now, you, you're aware of what happens on Merseyside. Do you think it's something you would like to see extended to other parts of the country? Yes, because at the moment you get people coming from other parts of the country into Merseyside yeah. to have, find that kind of availability. Uh, that tends to work with heroin addicts and people on opiates. It tends to work with them. But I'm not so sure it would work with cocaine yeah. and other drugs. It certainly wouldn't work with crack. How do you feel as an MP? I've taken that. Mm. How do you feel as an MP, though, about the problems, the misuse of drug... Uh, problems if you're talking about the drug of alcohol or tobacco at the moment. Do you think that the government maybe should do something more to curb that? Well, there's two pre-existing problems, and I don't want to add a third or a fourth to it. Mm. Uh, the government is gradually clamping down on tobacco and uh, that kind of advertising. But it won't come out of, the, out of, out of, out of its uh, sort of uh, bunker, if you like, and say tobacco will damage your health, it still says it may, doesn't it? I think it actually okay. does say it will it's, It will. It does yeah. say it will now, does it? Yeah. Mm. Yeah, but I mean, in fact, there are far more complex issues here, aren't there? The, um, the, the old argument, of course, of revenue, which is enormous, and the powers mm. that, that, that wield on, in, in favour of the cigarettes. In mm. fact, they, 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 it's foolish to smoke one cigarette a day. You know, it really mm. is foolish. Mm. And, and it's so known a fact now um, that it should be public knowledge and made very forcefully. Okay. The doctor that they were talking about on Merseyside also spent some time with me, and uh, this is what he had to say. Whaley goes to town. Now, John Marks, when you first came here, 
you were really going to close this place up, weren't you? I think like most psychiatrists, I held the orthodox view that uh, we were in business to treat the addiction, not to continue it by giving them drugs. And so I felt uh, we should uh, stop this ration, uh, this prescribing ration. Uh, the government gave each health district some money uh, to help set up treatment services with a stipulated condition that what we did with the cash be evaluated. So I had a look at Witness, um, where they gave out drugs and care, compared it with Bootle, just north of Liverpool, where they didn't. And I thought that I'd show that uh, prescribing in mm. Witness made the problem worse. So you actually came with a preconceived idea that it wasn't the right thing to do? That's right. Mm. Yes, the evaluation was an object lesson in the value of empirical <laughs> experiment, really. Although we didn't believe the results of the experiment when we found it. We thought we'd done it wrong. So you rechecked it? Yes, we then had recourse to all the uh, official statistics, the Home Office um, notifications, mm. etc. And we found that they pushed us in the same direction. Tell us now some of the positive uh, things that, that having drugs legally prescribed for addict, addicts achieves. Well, the first surprising finding was, of course, that it appeared to reduce the total number of people in a society that takes drugs. Uh, because under prohibition, in order to finance your drug taking, you have to buy five grams and sell four to each of four other individuals, adulterated to keep weight, and they do the same, and there's an enormous pyramid selling operation. Uh, and you also steal to finance the cash provision of this as well. So that there's a, a wholesale uh, burglary and pushing robbing from your house and my mm. car, mm. pushing to your children and mine. Have you any idea how much money is, is lost or...? Well, there's about uh, a habit costs perhaps on average £100 a day on the black market, and there's a minimum of 50,000 addicts in mm. England, so that's £5 million a day. £5 million a day that society is losing that it may be able to save? That's correct. Uh, and uh, also, all the individuals doing it uh, get criminalised, society gets undermined and destroyed. Uh, the drugs are even more unhealthy than they could possibly be in any other way because they're adulterated. What do you say to the people who accuse you of encouraging drug-taking by what you're doing? Well, that's what it appears like, but these guys use drugs despite alienation from their families, despite arrest by the police, despite imprisonment by the courts, despite being ripped off by gangsters, despite horrific diseases like AIDS. I can't think of any greater deterrence than poverty, loss of liberty, disease, even death. And, and yet they will yet use drugs. And so the, the, what faces me is not drugs from the clinic or come into hospital and get off drugs. It's drugs from the clinic or drugs from the mafia. And they also don't have to push to your children and mine and mm -hmm. Uncle Tom Cobley's and all in order to finance their use. So the total numbers of drug users are paradoxically reduced by giving drugs out to those who will use anyway. And the police have got more time to chase after people they're more likely to be able to stop. Yes, and I think that the reason that people aren't convinced, like us, is that it seems to fly in the face of common sense. To, to give drugs to drug takers, questions get asked like, well, why not give drink to alcoholics? Why don't they give alcohol to alcoholics? The difference. Well, you're not comparing like with like. If you were in Chicago in the 30s and you just robbed your grandmother uh, of her last pennies to buy a tot of filthy adulterated mess from Al Capone, I'd have a clear conscience about giving you a dram of best scotch each day. Is there any area? anywhere where you think prohibition has actually worked? Not that I'm aware of. Okay, now we uh, have a caller on the line called Peter. Hello, Peter. Hi, James. Now, Peter, uh, you describe yourself as what, I'm told? A recreational <coughs> drug user. I disagree with that statement at the start of the show that uh, there's no such thing as a recreational drug user. If you want to describe me as an addict, then mm. I am addicted to nicotine. <laughs> that is it. Right. However, I have experimented with a wide range of drugs for the past 15 years. Now, before you... Peter, you, you, you're, you're on here quite glibly saying you uh, use drugs for, for your own entertainment. Mm -hmm. 
What I want to try and get across tonight, if possible, because there are a lot of young people who watch this show, you know, people of my age, mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I, I want to try and make the fact that it does, you know, if you can do without them, you're going to be doing yourself a favour, don't you agree? Oh, sure. I mean, there's um, no compulsion to take them or, right. or whatever. You know. But uh, I do want to make uh, two points on the subject. Firstly, yeah. if the authorities ever want to do something seriously useful about the drug situation, they're going to have to get away from this idealistic point of view. That is, by making mm. criminals of drug users, we can eventually achieve the, the Which ideal I think, drugless society. To be fair, going over to Chris here for one moment, who is our, our MP on tonight, and, and Chris, I mean, the government are moving towards that now. And, and even the police themselves have actually said that they think that what's happening on Merseyside is, is helping to some extent. Well, let's make it quite plain. The government's not going to legalise drugs. But I think you need to keep it illegal to force people into the services in the mm. middle where they can get their control their available, uh, available yeah. drugs under proper circumstances. Well, right. even Douglas, even just a, one moment, Peter, I'll come back to you. But Douglas, yes. Yeah, the, the comment that, that Peter just made now is quite reasonable. Yes, there is such a thing as recreational drug use. It does actually exist, but... Like drinking in the pub in the evening sure, and smoking cigarettes. Sure, yeah. but the higher... In, and it's already been shown that the higher the number of users of whatever drug you choose, then the higher the percentage of those who will become addicted mm. and have problems. So that if you, you <coughs> make it a wider, uh, widely available, you're going to get more people. So you're going to get clinics filled up with these people. That's what will happen. Peter? Well, I think we must take a realistic approach to the situation and say that there are these young folk who are going to experiment with drugs. There's nothing we're going to do to dissuade mm. them, so how can we ensure that they do it as safely as possible? And the way to do that is through counselling, education and information. OK, now, Peter, thank you. That's a good point. We're going to have to leave you there. I'd like now to talk to uh, Dr. Daffod Allen-Jones, who is aware of what happens on Merseyside, but you take a completely different view, don't you, Doctor? Yes, well, of course, I am in a completely different area. I'm uh, in an area of about half a million people um, living in North Wales, yeah. uh, bordering uh, on areas of England where um, drugs are. So how do you treat addicts yourself? What, do you, what are your feelings for? Well, I've, I've seen um, periods of drug usage come and go over uh, about 20 years. I've seen earlier periods when... Um, there was yeah, but what do you do yourself? Oh, I, I offer um, uh, desertification. Uh, oh. I'll offer to take anybody in, pin, take, them, take them off any drugs they're using, and then try to give them as much support as one can to keep them off. So what do you think John Marks is, is doing? Um, well... Um, I, can, I, I prefer to, to, to say what I'm doing. You know, if no, I, but I want to know what you think John Marks is doing. Um, I, I, can't, I, I can't agree. Well, you um, can't? In fact, no. would it be fair to say that you think he's being very irresponsible? Oh, no. I think he's... Um, you know, I know John very well. We, I, we know each other. But we, we absolutely disagree. Mm. Um, I know, for instance, now, that ampules of um, injectable opiates are available on the street in North Wales mm. with the batch numbers rubbed off. But isn't... So you're saying that they may get them from someone like... I think, there is, I think there is a leak case, there's no yeah. question. You yeah. can buy methadone on the street. Now, um, if we collude in developing, um, uh, if you like, a subculture mm. or a, an endemic situation where young people are um, um, easily going to get these things on a permanent basis... OK, let me just, before you go any further, come over to Richard Stevenson, who is here. Now, Richard <laughs> wants drugs to be made freely available all drugs right yes absolutely but i mean don't you don't you see what what the doctor here is saying is that that if they are freely available then some people are going to abuse this and they are yeah absolutely and what you would have to say i mean it is entirely possible that therefore the amount of drug use would go up but it does not follow that the amount of problem drug use would rise and furthermore if it did my contention is that you could deal with these problems much better when the problem's out in the open, it's legal, and users are yep. amenable well, to advice. Okay, so like, so Richard, who is, uh, has been an addict, yes, Richard. So what you're actually saying there is if, um, if people, it's okay for people to take drugs in the, in the end, like, because uh, they are legalised, they get into such a mess because they're taking heavier and heavier mm. uh, addiction, that it's, we're not, what we're not actually talking about is the people that are involved within it, or we're talking about um, the crime involved in that. I mean, which way does it go? I don't, I just We're don't. never going to encourage people. In fact, all legalizers believe that, when, that we would intensify education programs and that sort of thing. But let me just put one point which I think is not very been raised quick, yeah, before. Okay. Very quickly. Legalization, I put it to you, is 
the best and possibly the only way of getting criminals out of drugs, and that, I think, is almost the most important point. OK, one last point to the doctor before we must take a well, break. Would you, would you uh, freely make available amphetamines, for instance, when we know that amphetamines can pe make people really psychotic? Would you legalise LSD? Would you legalise acid, which we know uh, some people want? Would you, would you legalise everything, or would you pick and choose what you imagine at one time is least harmful um, if you allow people to have whatever drugs, whatever things that affect their mind and okay. their feelings, where do you stop? Doctor, thank you very much indeed. We'll come back and uh, answer some more of those questions after mm -hmm. the break. OK, we've had scores of letters on this particular subject, as you would guess, and a chap called Robin from uh, London W2, SW2, says, tougher laws whereby convicted dope dealers, peddlers and couriers alike all get automatic life sentences with no parole, and if you have any of these pro-legalizers on the show, knee them where it hurts and throw them out. OK, we won't actually do that to you, uh, Richard. You think that perhaps you're being misunderstood, oh, don't I you? I don't think I'm being misunderstood, but the point I'd like to make for in the last telephone call is yes. that just because we disapprove of something doesn't mean it should be prohibited. Many people disapprove of alcohol. Would anyone seriously suggest prohibiting alcohol? They would not. They did, America yeah, did it, and my goodness, it. what a disaster it was. And so is drugs. Drugs is a disaster yeah. too. But then the, 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 the business is very much more complex than that because it's, it, it, it provides revenue. There's a lot of money involved and other yeah. right. issues yeah. involved right. as well. It's socially acceptable to get drunk, yeah. as it were. Yeah. You see what yeah. I mean? So I mean, there are a number of people here, presumably most of you here in the audience, you use some kind of drugs, right? Um, <laughs> do, I mean, does anybody want to start off and tell me what sort of drugs they use? Or uh, are you keeping that a secret? What about you? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you're, you're looking at me. I thought I'd start with you. <laughs> okay. Well, Tiny Tim's godson over here. What about um, what about you? You were holding up a book before telling me all about uh, oh, cannabis. You you, you you know you use cannabis. Um, I'll say that there are a lot of people here that have yeah. experimented with uh, all kinds of drugs. Uh, I think, I answer, think we all agree. Yeah. Yeah. It's cannabis. It's. I think there's a lot of people here agree that hard drugs, uh, you can't really justify them. But Would you no. actually like not to smoke anything? I mean, no, you'd like not to smoke. smoke. It's better than no. getting pissed. It, it is. It you think it is? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Doesn't, yeah. Give, you doesn't give you a beer belly. Yeah. Doesn't give you a beer belly. Yeah. There's, yeah. A, there's, a big <laughs> difference. there's a very big difference between soft drugs and hard drugs. Of course there is. Yeah. But yeah. do you think well, one think leads on to another? No. You don't feel one leads on to another? Well, maybe... Just a minute. Yes, I don't think it's necessarily that. The trouble comes is that in, in the illegal market, and I'm arguing against myself here, that in, in the illegal market that there is always this element of the quiet push and then introducing mm. something harder when they're pushing the softer stuff, and that's how it yeah. manipulates. Well, it's 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 so, I mean, cannabis yeah. is not that bad. Okay. It's, no, it's no worse than smoking a cigarette, to what my What about my friend in the back with the, uh, the hat? I was just saying about that, that point of leading on, right, from softer stuff to harder stuff, that you're missing the point slightly in that, like, you don't... You, you would never find a dealer that did the two together. Mm. You no. know, you find the people who smoke soft drugs stick together and the deal yeah. sort of smoke off the fence and that, but you, you don't know junkies uh -huh. or people like that. Mm. So I don't think it would lead on to that, mm. you know. But you'd be, you know, I mean, you, you I mean, drink, you drink some, presumably as well as, as everything else? Oh, yeah, 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 but I mean, it's a difference between me, say, <coughs> being like, um, Drinking socially and someone, yeah. the difference between someone drinking socially and being an alcoholic. Okay, well, let's, let's take like a, a, a stuff. another angle. We've got uh, Douglas on the phone, right? Yeah, Douglas, can you Hi. hear me? Yes, I can hear you perfectly. Now, Douglas, you've had uh, some drug-related problems in your life, haven't you? Tell me <laughs> fairly briefly about them. Well, my son's a heroin addict, um, but uh, the good news is he's been clean for five years. Yep. Um, I think this whole question of legalisation is something of a red herring. And I thought that figure of £5 million pounds a day which came out was very interesting because mm. I'm wondering whether the chemical companies who have made so much money out of making women and others tr uh, addicted to tranquilizers are behind this yeah. uh, because um, it really has got nothing to do with it. What, what we need is more emphasis upon recovery. You see, I'm involved in an organization called Families Anonymous.
But don't you think what uh, John Marks on Merseyside was doing is, is helping to people to, to recover, or at least not to, to, to be uh, drawn into the web, if you like, that, that drugs can lead you into? Well, let me put it this way, James. I've, in Families Anonymous, I've, for five years, I've been involved in a self-help group where families of people who are addicted uh, meet with each other and help each other. Yeah. My heart sinks when a parent says, my son or my daughter's got a script. Because, uh, which is a legalized, uh, a legalized prescription. But isn't because it... What happens, let me just mm, finish. What, what you see is they go downhill from there on. Now, I can only speak of my own experience. I don't say that the people on Merseyside aren't doing the opposite, but methadone is mm. more addictive than heroin. Heroin is comparatively easy to get off. So it's much easier before you can, alcohol. Douglas, though, before you can get off it, you need to be taken down, don't you? You think it would be better then for, I don't know how your son was, 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 was got off heroin, but it's better for him to be given uh, registered doses of heroin rather than methadone, you're saying? He had methadone for a week. And then and, he was off. And, and th then he was off. Mm. Yeah. Great. I'm glad but to hear the, it. Uh, the important thing is counselling. What we right. haven't heard about okay. is something has to be given. At the end of the show, Douglas, we're going to be putting up some phone numbers, and for people who w would like to get in touch with various organisations, the phone numbers will come up later on in the programme. Let's take a, a few calls now from people who have been phoning in, and we haven't had time to get to many calls on the programme tonight, which is unfortunate. Dave from Essex, not David Essex. Dave from Essex, hello. Hello. Yes, Dave. Um, yeah, where well, I live, James, uh, there's a lot of drugs really broken out a lot, yeah. And on the subject about like, legalising all drugs, I mean, I first start looking, you can't really do it in an... Fine, thanks, Dave. John from North Wales. Hello, John. <laughs> Hi, James. Yes, John. Hi. Um, I'd like to ask uh, one of the guests you've got there... This Speak up a bit, John. About... Hi, James. Yeah? I'd like to ask one of the guests you've got there this evening about people smoking dope in the pubs, yeah? What about it? Well, the thing is, it's, it's just like smoking a cigarette when they... OK. It's, it's, you know, cigarettes can kill you. I mean, it's, it's sure. a stupid thing to say, really, isn't it? Right, Steve from Bristol. Hello, Steve. <laughs> Hello. Yeah. I, I, I've been in the Air Force for four and a half years, and I've seen some of the drugs abused in the way that they're, they're, they're actually laid onto kids yeah. under the age of 10 with badges that, you know, that right. smell nice and taste nice. Yeah. And then the next time they come back, when the badges stop smelling nice and tasting nice, they cost them 10p. Yeah. And eventually these kids get onto the harder ones and more and more money. Is this justifiable? Do you think kids should be put under these sort of pressures and to do this you're now legalizing it mm. and to legalize that sort of thing is, is totally outrageous. Now but the point is not so much legalizing it I think, thank you for, for your call, not so much legalizing it that we're saying decriminalize it so that the, the people involved in drug pushers, the people uh, in, in the, the drug underground if you like, the gangsters in there who are using human beings and putting them through torture are done away with and the one way to do that seems not to use the police all the time and come back to Chris over here for a few moments but to actually uh, make it less of a criminal offence and help the poor people who get addicted to it. Well, you might be right with heroin but I don't think you're right with crack. After all, you can become addicted after yeah. two or three goes. You're addicted yeah. for life. There's no known cure. Totally agree with you. Yeah. But what, I, what I'm saying is that, that there has to be another answer rather than the, 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 uh, the criminal one, don't you think? Well, most government effort has been directed at controlling supply. Mm. What we've got to do is try and control demand, preventive education, alternative kicks, that kind yeah. of thing. How do you feel about Richard's view that it should be just freely available, you know, in, for instance, a, a tobacconist? There's a lot of very intelligent people who have that point of view, but I don't think we're going to see it in this country. That was political, wasn't it? That was very oh, political. Yeah. Oh, had my train. Yeah. <laughs> Richard, I mean, has, has anything you've heard tonight on the show changed your mind at all or not? Oh, not in the slightest, no. No? I'm, I've not really had an opportunity to go through it all, but I, incidentally, I, I must... Although I, although Chris also is very intelligent and speaks mm. awfully well on this subject, it is amazing how much <laughs> misinformation there is yes. on this subject. Yes, I true. honestly, if I, if I may just with respect say, this notion that crack is instantaneously addictive and incurable is maybe true, but seems to me improbable, and it's really far what too do you mean early. It may be true, but seems well, improbable. I, sim don't, I simply don't believe it, to be frank. But yeah. I mean, the fact is, it's such a new substance, we uh -huh. honestly don't know that much about it yet. But in America, they've had it for a number of years now. They oh, have terrific oh, problems in America with crack. Yeah, it's a different, exactly, it's yeah, a different that, social yeah. context yeah. entirely. Yeah. Yeah. And I do not believe we'd ever get that way here. It's you don't think that what will happen in America necessarily will happen over here? Certainly not. Yeah. We all, yeah. One thing we know is the effect of drugs depends entirely 
upon yeah. the social context. And I wonder if anybody in the audience has tried crack or would admit to it. Has anybody mm. tried that here? No. I mean, would any of you, because, you know, you go, you're, you're, some of you are students, some of you are sort of uh, probably offered all kinds of things. Would well, any of you actually uh, take it if you were offered just to try it? No. no, no. You wouldn't? No. No. That's heartening. No, no, no. That's heartening. Did you, are you, you wanted to say something to me then? I thought you wanted to say something to me. I got the yes, feeling. You did. No, yeah, you I did. Right. Yes, yes, I did want to say something. The, 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 I mean, I work with, with the police, as mm. you know, and um, there, I see these people quite frequently, um, but they are an example of a wider problem in society in that the police say to me that they deal generally with about a single 5% of the population. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and that's why they're offering this argument to get away from the criminal idea of it but that should apply to other elements of their work too in what way because they're getting nowhere it's a round yeah. circle yeah. thing that goes on and on and on with the same people there's no efforts made to counsel mm. and try and get some of these poor people out of that rut that they're in do you think and let me go let me come to all three of you in turn here do you think that if for instance cannabis which is the one thing that most of the, these these uh, ladies and gentlemen do leave him alone have come in here and think we're talking about. I mean, it's a terrifically wider issue than just cannabis. Do you think that cannabis should be legalised or decriminalised? There is nothing more harmful in cannabis than there is in a cigarette. Mm. I mean, it might reduce your potency a bit, yeah. and it may cause cancer as well. But, yeah. but really, cigarettes are just as yeah. big a problem, so you can pay money and take your right. choice as far as I'm No, I know what Richard will say on this, so I won't bother. But, but Chris, what about you? <laughs> well, I was in university in the 60s. Did you try it? Well, I wouldn't admit to it if I had. Come no, on, Chris. No, I wouldn't have. Yeah. Enough of yeah. a politician to, to say that. Um, but I think it would give the wrong school? message to people yeah. to, to legalise it at yeah. the moment. I, hey! Thank you. What? Yes, I did try it once. My brother was... Um, you did? Only once. I tried it one day because mm. my, my brother mm. was living in mm. some <laughs> commune somewhere. I went to see him. I smoked it okay. through the end of a carrot and felt yeah. sick. Thanks very much. Indeed. Thank you to everybody for a moment. <laughs> now, listen, oh, just for one moment... One word. We've got something to, uh, to, to, uh, to show you at the end, and I want you to think about it. What I don't want you to do is think about trying drugs, OK? A lot of people here have tried it. A lot of people out there have tried it. It will muck you up if you try it, all right? Drugs can kill, although Richard will say there's no real evidence. They can. They will get certain people addicted to them. And you can see the problems of alcohol and tobacco in society now. So just do yourselves a favour and remember <laughs> that drugs will really muck your life up. So if you can, leave it alone. Good night. Have a nice weekend. Bye-bye.